Hey everyone, this is John Spaulding with IndiciumLabs.com. I uh, just want to go over the EIGRP metric calculation with everybody. Um, so right here I have open uh, Notepad. Uh, I will post this in the blog as well, but this is a URL that will have more information on this uh, subject. Uh, it goes right to Cisco's documentation. Um, and in that documentation you will find the uh, EIGRP metric uh, calculation. Um, this, so this is our formula that we're going to be using today. Uh, which is 256 times uh, 10 to the seventh uh, divided by the minimum bandwidth plus the end-to-end -end delay. Uh, and I'm going to go through and, and show you how to um, get get these uh, delay and then the minimum minimum bandwidth uh, off of the router. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll show you the topology. Uh, we're going to be dealing with router 10 today, um, looking at R4's loopback. Uh, all of these devices are going to be in the same uh, EIGRP uh, process, which is AS311. Uh, uh, so let's get started. Uh, let's make sure that we have our EIGRP adjacencies with uh, router 5 and router 7, uh, which we do. Let's go ahead and see if we have uh, EIGRP routes. Uh, so it looks like we have all of them uh, here, and we can tell that they're internal by this capital D. Uh, over here on the left hand side and the admin distance which is 90. Uh, if this was external it would be uh, the admin distance would be 170 and you would see a DEX uh, next to here on the left hand side. Um, so the first thing we want to do is get the metric uh, off of the uh, R4's loopback route. So let's go ahead and get this uh, metric value here and go into notepad and paste it. So we need to determine how the router came up with this metric value. Uh, so let's go ahead and the best way to do this is to go into the EIGRP topology table and uh, looking at that specific host route uh, and here we go so EIGRP uh, knows to get to R4's loopback via R5 and R7 um, so we see these two uh, neighbors are advertising R4's loopback uh, two main uh, places that we're going to want to look at are the total end-to-end -end delay and the minimum bandwidth here uh, and um, we also see that our feasible distance to get to this route which is going to be the uh, advertised distance from R5 and R7 plus our local cost to get to this route uh, is, is right here um, so you can see that this is our feasible distance uh, and this is the advertised distance from R5 this is the advertised distance from R7 um, so let's go ahead and get the delay and paste that right in here into notepad. Uh, let's go ahead and get the minimum bandwidth as well. So this is our bandwidth uh, min. Alright, so let's go back to our formula here. So we need to uh, divide, uh, so 10 to the 7th divided by uh, our 10, it looks like 10 megs here. Um, so 10,000. So let's go ahead and do that. The easiest way is to open up uh, the Windows calculator here and if you click on scientific it's a, uh, you'll be able to do the 10 to the 7th um, and we'll go ahead and divide that here by uh, 10 meg uh, which will give us a thousand. Uh, one other thing is for the delay we need to break this down into tens of microseconds so we'll go ahead and divide that just by 10 right here. Uh, so we have um, our minimum bandwidth uh, value plus our uh, delay in tens of microseconds which is going to equal 1800 uh, here so then if we take 1800 times that by 256 we should get our uh, metric value that easy folks so um, I appreciate everybody joining uh, I will be blogging on uh, more on EIGRP with the feasible distance, uh, the advertised distance, uh, traffic engineering, uh, different ways to manipulate uh, routes with, within EIGRP. So appreciate everybody. Uh, this is John Spaulding with indiciumlabs.com.